So sorry for the lack of uploads lately, college has been absolutely kicking my ass, but Stargirl ended this week and I honestly just need to talk about it. not just the final, but this season as a whole, I have so many thoughts on it. Um, because season 2 was just fantastic in my opinion, there was a little bit of a lull at times, it felt like maybe some of the older characters like Rick, Yolanda, Beth and Courtney were not getting as much development as a lot of the new characters introduced and while that's definitely still sort of a critique as the season had ended, I do think that overall it was a really 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 solid entry into DC TV. Probably just not as good as season 1, I think season 1 was not just more consistent but kind of felt bigger but I think season 2 had higher highs and thus might work better on rewatch I'm not really sure yet season two honestly pushed the show into top tier echelon of comic book shows for me it's definitely now my second favorite comic book show that's still airing I would put it just behind Superman and Lois as my number two maybe number three it depends on the boys season three because the boys is this show that like while I kind of forget about it when it's not airing, when it is airing, I can't get enough of it. So it's possible the boys will be like my number two with Stargirl being number three. But even that said, I think Stargirl is now like definitely top 10, maybe even top five comic book shows of all time for me. It's up there with Arrow, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Smallville, Superman Lois, The Boys, and Daredevil as well. So it's like, it's it's just that good for me. But really quick, before getting deeper into this video, I just want to ask if you can subscribe if you're not already. I make DC and Marvel videos as much as I can, and we're actually getting quite close to 700 subscribers. So if we could reach that by like the end of the year, even that would be absolutely amazing. Um, still been getting quite a few subscribers, even though I haven't really been uploading, which is awesome. So thank you so much if you're somebody who's subscribed recently even if you're just subscribed in general thank you so much but yeah so star girl season two um i love that this episode the final ended with the coming 2022 tagline of the frenemies which is season three and i just love when shows kind of do that i don't know what it is about it but it makes the shows feel more cinematic to me it doesn't even make any sense because it's literally just a black screen saying coming 2022 but it makes the shows feel very HBO-esque for me personally when like they end with the tagline that you're gonna get something else. It also kind of reminds me of the Marvel movies where most of them end saying like a certain character will return or whatnot and that's kind of what it feels like here. It also reminds me of when Elseworlds the Arrowverse crossover ended and it gave us the tagline of coming in 2019 Crisis on Infinite Earths which was great you know it was really awesome that they teased crisis that far back and it's awesome now that we're getting the tease for season three of this i would love the arver shows could even kind of take the time to do this at the end of their current seasons where like we get a little tease of something big coming next season and it says coming next year or even coming this year in the case of a lot of the arver shows this season had both their current and their last seasons this year but um, the final was just so big and huge. So many characters from throughout the season ended up coming back in a huge way. And it's it reminded me of season one because season one is, in my opinion, one of the most rewatchable seasons of comic book TV of all time. So many things are set up throughout that season that while in the first couple episodes, it feels like a lot's being thrown at you. Once you've seen the season once and you go back and look at those older episodes, it's kind of insane how many characters are seated or how many little plot lines are seated that end up being crucial later on. And I didn't get as big of a feeling with that in the early parts of season two. It felt like season two was, it was still great, but it felt like it was much less kind of you're getting teased for a lot of things that are coming later, but now that the season is over, it's very clear that a lot of things were still seated throughout this season that ended up playing crucial roles, and even then, there was stuff set up in season one that ended up getting to fruition this season, like a lot of the, the kid versions of the ISA, uh, for example, Artemis, for example, Isaac Bowen, they are two characters who were just teased in season one and ended up playing crucial roles in this season, so that's something that gave me very season one vibes where we were getting payoffs later on to something that was set up before but um as a whole i felt that while there were not near as many fight scenes this season i think that the fight scenes we did get this season were probably some of the best in the entire show season one had much more fight scenes and like season one didn't have a bad fight scene season one had some absolutely amazing fight like for example the first time we see the new jsa team up and take on sportsmaster and tigress is one of the best fight scenes i've seen in anything but i think that every fight scene we get in season Season 2 tops that fight scene and tops all the other fight scenes just because it felt like even though they were spread out more anytime we did get a fight scene this season it really 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 hit home and it was really 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 done well it also just made the final have much more of a payoff when we had like a dozen characters who were set up throughout the season get a big moment in the final in a big fight and that team up shot looks absolutely amazing 
And one thing I kind of thought about before making this video was that uh, the best way to describe Stargirl is that every single season or both the seasons so far have just felt like 13 episodes of an Arrowverse crossover. Like even though it's not an Arrowverse crossover, it feels like it just because of the scale, the amount of characters and the fight scenes and the, just the little moments. They all have that feel to it that you would get from an Arrowverse crossover, which is really, really cool. Like the best way I can describe the fight scene in the final is it feels like something we would have seen in Invasion back in 2016, I believe that was, or even like it feels like what we would have seen in like episode two of Crisis on Earth X back in 2017. So um, that's just something awesome that I love about this show as well. It's just as well, the budget, it didn't feel as big like I said, but the budget was still used incredibly well throughout this. Now I don't think Eclipso was quite as good as the entire ISA last season. Like for example, Brainwave, uh, Icicle, all of those sort of characters. I do think I Eclipso was still a very good character, but I think as far as like villains go, I kind of preferred Brainwave and I kind of preferred Icicle and also so I prefer Sports Mars and Tigris, but they're like my favorite villains on the show when they're not even really villains anymore. But um, Eclipso was still very, very good. It's just, I felt like towards the end of the season, it did feel like we were getting him a little bit too much, not even too much, but it felt like a lot of the things that was happening with the character were a tiny bit repetitive or were kind of just rehashes of things we had already seen this season. Whereas with the Injustice Society, there were so many different characters showing up that I felt like it was kind of hard to get that repetitive feeling since we were seeing so many different dynamics with so many different characters. Like we had Dragon King, Icicle, The Fiddler, um, and Brainwave. So there was a lot of like different things happening there. Whereas with Eclipso, it was a lot of the same character doing the same sort of things. But that might just be a personal kind of thing. I still thought he was a great villain, just not quite as top tier as the Injustice Society. Um, in terms of the core members of the new JSA, like Courtney, Rick, Yolanda and Beth, I already mentioned that most of them didn't really get near as much development this season as characters last season. Like for example, Yolanda and Rick especially sort of took a serious backseat around episode, I don't know if it was 7 or 8, but they took a backseat fairly into the season and didn't really come back into play until around episode 12. And like for members of the huge J or like the main JSA, that is a little bit kind of weird that they would sideline those characters so much. I know that that is one critique a lot of people had with this season is that a lot of the main members a lot of people are watching for were getting sidelined very easily. Besides them though, Beth actually had one of the best arcs this season and ended up becoming one of my favorite characters on the show. I didn't exactly love her last season. I felt like in general she was just kind of this quirky character who, you know, you know what I'm talking about, like the quirky characters that are always on these shows and uh, they don't add a crazy amount other than just being there as a plot device but bet this season really did come into her own as a character and really did just jump past like a dozen characters on this show to become one of my favorite because i just felt the lines of dialogue they were giving her the way they were developing her character was so interesting and so well done and i can't wait to see where they go next with her rick and yolanda unfortunately have dropped a fair bit just because of how little we got to see of them this season what we did get with rick and yolanda was great but so many other characters just got great development this season that i feel like they dropped a little bit and um, obviously we're going to be seeing much more of starman aka sylvester pemberton can't wait to see what they do with that i also really like how the show is slowly bringing more members of the jsa or more older heroes back into the fold as the show goes on because like the justice society of america and the seven soldiers of victory they're supposed to be like the two huge superhero teams in this universe and it, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me that all of those heroes would have died more or less in one night that's like on earth prime if we found out that the entire arvis justice league and the entire Legends of Tomorrow just died out of nowhere. So like Supergirl, Flash, Black Lightning, The Atom, uh, Mia's Green Arrow, and then of course Legends like Sarah, Nate, all of them just randomly died out of nowhere in a, in a huge battle and we never really saw them again. Like after how much we've seen these characters be heroes, it doesn't make sense for that to have happened. So I like that we're slowly bringing back JSA members and finding out that no, they never died because of course they wouldn't. They're huge heroes on this earth it makes sense that a lot of them are still alive or a lot of them are still out there just various things happen i am really interested to learn what actually happened to sylvester like why did he just disappear or drop off the face of the earth for so long how did he not die like i'm sure there's an explanation there or something like there's a reason he didn't die and there's a reason why he's been gone for like 10 years now 
I do hope we start to see more of the JSA though. Like it would be awesome to see Jay Garrick or other characters pop up in present day as well. On top of that, we know that um, Shining Knight went to find the rest of the Soldiers of Victory, which they would include characters like Green Arrow, Speedy, all of them. So I would be really interested to see if he pops up in Season 3. I wasn't expecting him to pop up this season, so that's not a disappointment. But I do think like when we're getting into late Season 3, I think it's about time we start seeing where that storyline was going, unless it was like a setup for a spin-off or something. Um, Mike got a lot of character development this season. He's really coming into his own as a, as a fleshed out character because he was somebody who definitely got barely anything to do in season one I felt and then we have Jakeem and Jade coming in as members of the new JSA as well but honestly they're just setting up so many great characters we got Tyrus Sportsmaster and Artemis being in present daylight we got Cindy wanting to join the JSA we even have the shades still around so I'm really 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 excited to where they go with a lot of this but honestly season two while not as good as season one or not as consistent as season one I think the highs were a little bit higher than what we saw prior and I can't wait to see if Stargirl as a whole ends up being kind of brought in with the rest of DC TV more. I think it'd be really cool in a year or two from now seeing these characters show. The thing is though is that the amount of heroes or the amount of like team characters we have on Stargirl almost rivals the amount of heroes or team characters we have on every other show. It's like if we were to do a full scale crossover we would have like 20 characters from Arrow, Flash, Batwoman, Legends, at Supergirl, all of the shows, and then we would have like 20 characters from Stargirl alone. So I think that's pretty interesting and it'll be cool to see if they do more sort of stuff with that. Um, Superman, Lois and Stargirl are probably going to be airing fairly soon together next year. I think Superman and Lois will probably be back around February, run through maybe halfway through the summer and I think once Superman Lois ends Stargirl will pick up because if this year is anything to go by it does feel like they want Superman and Lois and Stargirl as their two main HBO Max DC shows they want them not to be airing together so that would make sense if if maybe they do that and then maybe once the two of them end we could see Naomi start or something like that but I'm really excited to see where they go next with this show but how did you feel about Stargirl season two did you like it did you hate it and if you enjoyed this video please remember to like share subscribe and all of that and I hope you have a great day.